took on Stanford today at Husky Stadium, and they delivered an emphatic message. Napoleon Kaufman on the receiving end of this punt right here. It's seven zip Stanford. First time the Huskies had trailed all year. Kaufman takes care of that. He puts Washington in position to score, takes the punt return down inside the five yard line with that great speed. It would score on a Brunel run. Brunel here scrambles, goes to the left, comes back to the near side of the field. And Leif Johnson breaks open in the end zone. Brunel finds him his second touchdown catch of the year. Washington led 21-7 on halftime. They rolled it up on the Cardinal, 41-7 to go to 8-0. They are at Arizona next week. Georgia, Florida, the cocktail party, huge implications for the SEC East. Frank Harvey was the story, not Garrison Hurst for the dogs on the ground today. Harvey breaks through the Gator defense, 80 yards to the end zone, 7-3 dogs. Spurrier's offense effective through the air in the first half. Spurrier livid about his defense at that point, but they would play a much better ball game than a lot of us expected. Matthews to Willie Jackson for a touchdown. 23-17, Gators at halftime. It's 26-17 before Eric Zier rallied the dogs in a three-play drive. Brian Bohanna, the nice diving catch. It's 26-24. But on third and 13, the Gators trying to play keep away and run out the clock. Matthews finds Harrison Houston. They held onto the ball. They preserved the victory. They've won three straight over Georgia, the first time in the series since 1961. Matthews was brilliant. The Dogs could have clinched a spot in the SEC title game. Instead, the Gators are the front runners. Tennessee and South Carolina in Columbia. Does anybody want to win that division? 140 to play. The ball's down 24-17. Heath Schuler dumps it to Mose Phillips. Some incredibly bad tackling by the Gamecocks. Eight guys had a shot at Phillips. They didn't get him. Gets in the end zone 24-23. Minute 40 to play. They line up for two and the win. Schuler, James Littleman Stewart, but Hank Campbell, the walk on linebacker, the former state wrestling champion, gets him in a bear hug. Steve Tannehill, Sparky Woods, a big victory. They've won three in a row since the player vote. They scored on drives of 90, 80, and 79 yards. Meanwhile, the Vols have lost three straight. Look at this. Michigan and Purdue in the Big Ten. The Wolverines pushed to the limit by the Boilermakers on this day. Eric Hunter back to pass. Pressure, rolls right, finds Scott Green in the end zone. 17-7, the biggest halftime deficit for the Wolverines in almost four years. But back they came in the third quarter. Elvis Gerback to Tony McGee, the tight end, made it 17-14. Michigan ahead, 24-17. Hunter, in desperation, is picked off by Pat Maloney. The Wolverines get a huge scare, but they hang on and win it 24-17. Jesse Bighouse Johnson ran for 124 yards, but Purdue outgained Michigan 412 to 376. Still an 18th straight Big Ten win, a new record for Michigan. And in the Southwest Conference, Texas and Texas Tech. Adrian Walker for the Longhorns takes the pitch, goes around the left side, cuts across the field. Eventually, we get to the far sideline, 70 yard touchdown run. It would set up a Phil Brown touchdown, rather. Texas went up 29 20, a wild offensive display, seesaw ball game in Lubbock. Then watch Lloyd Hill. Gets one on one coverage. Hill throws the uh, defender, Victor Frazier, out of the way. One of three touchdown catches, made it 29 27. But the Horns would pull away. Guard air, back to pass, keeps it on the ground, gets in the end zone. Texas, after losing their first two ball games, They've won, now won five in a row, 44-43 in a wild one. All right, Lee, back now to the teams at two and two. Oh, the Bulls, the Citrus, and the Holiday with the Big Ten tie-ins. Hoping the Buckeyes would win this one. Robert Smith, his first carry of the ball game, breaks outside for 25 yards. Smith would score in each of the Buckeyes' first two drives. A somewhat sloppy track, didn't slow him down. Holder Joel Kessel hit by an orange, but the concentration never wavers here, and Tim Williams converts. That made it 20-7. In the second quarter, 21-7 Buckeyes. That was conversion in the third touchdown. They missed the block punt. Scott Fisher blocked in the end zone by Jason Lewis. Tito Paul recovers for the touch, uh, touchdown in the end zone there. Ohio State goes on to crush Iowa. The Citrus and Holiday breathe a big sigh of relief. 38-15 is the final. But San Diego State and Colorado State, Marshall Falk showcase in Fort Collins today. But he runs into his own lineman here. His feet are pinned underneath him. Scary moment. Not hurt on that play. But then on the corner blitz by Andre Strode, not only does Falk lose four yards, but he's forced to leave the game with a strained left quadricep. Was not the same after that play. In the third quarter, his first play back, the Aztecs keep him in to block, and quarterback David Lowry finds Curtis Shearer over the middle. Shearer takes it the rest of the way, 55 yards. 
San Diego State only gets 92 yards rushing. Falk held to 60 yards, but they win in Fort Collins 20 to 13 to move to four and one in the WAC. He would not like what he saw after that, though. James Bostic for Auburn will bust off the left side. He's gone 53 yards, a career high 211 yards for Bostic. Later on, Auburn was driving, but Stan White out of the shotgun goes back. Picked off by Gary Adams, and Adams tightrope down the sidelines. 85 yards for the Hog touchdown. The game went in on a 24-all tie. Four field goals for Todd Wright. Three field goals for Scott Etheridge, including the game-tying 27-yarder with 3.12 to go. Auburn's bowl chances, are, they're in deep trouble. They have to win the last two to have any bowl chance. Clemson Wake Forest, wow, what a turnaround here. Clemson, third string tailback, Greg Hood takes it on a 15-yard touchdown run. Clemson up 15-10, but with 3.40 to go, Keith West, the Demon Deacon quarterback, finds Todd Dixon, his second touchdown of the game. They go nuts in Winston-Salem. Bill Dooley's final home game, and they tear down the goalposts as Wake Forest shocks Clemson State. Johnson hooks up with the ex-quarterback, Curtis Conway. The big play guy for the Trojans takes it in 31 yards, 7-zip SC at halftime. In the third quarter, it was 14-0 when Grady Benton tried to get the Sun Devils going. Play action fake, rolls out. Bob Brasher eventually gets open. Benton finds him here. 37-yard touchdown makes it 14-7 Trojans. Sun Devils kick the field goal, was 14-10, but then Curtis Conway in the ensuing kickoff muffs it, bobbles it, picks it up here, stutter step, looks like a big mistake, but he breaks free. Look at him hit the crease, great move back to the center of the field, completely turns momentum back around towards the Trojans, 95 yards in the touchdown. He also has a punt return for a touchdown this year. Conway, well, I guess he's saying he's a Heisman contender. Sorry, Curtis, a slow start. 23-13, the Trojans win it. McFadden for USC, 95 yards and a touchdown. They've won four straight trips into Tempe. Not easy to do. Also in the Pac-10, Oregon and Washington State. The Ducks somehow own the Cougars in Pullman. Drew Bledsoe here, terrible game against the Ducks last year. Picked off by Chad Coda. Coda brings it all the way back to the goal line. He's going to fumble a ball here, but Eric Castle recovers it in the end zone. All the breaks went to the Ducks. They held Bledsoe in check. They sacked him six times, picked him off twice, held him to 165 yards, and Tommy Thompson kicked four field goals. Blowed on a top 10 team for a long time, and they got it today. Coy Detmer, the true freshman, gets the start in the rain. Very early problems for him. It's picked off right there by Travis Hill. Sets up a Husker touchdown. Then Calvin Jones with the jaunt here. Part of that Ibach tandem for the Huskers, 47 yards out. 14-0 Nebraska. They just kept on rolling. 31-7. The first back through. The big fullback, Lance Lewis. Forget about it. That made it 38-7. For Colorado fans, visions of the mid-80s in the powder blue uniforms. And the Husker fans, long-awaited.